Hey, man, what's happening? Good to see you. Good to see you, Tom. How All are right, you? so I'm really good, uh, except for post-election. Now, I know everybody's talking about it, I, you know, we, and I think we need to talk about it because that's been the topic uh, of the week. It's been the topic for several weeks now, actually, leading up to it. And so, of course, now uh, we as therapists are having to deal with um, the the fallout. I mean, you know, living in Florida, there's a lot of uh, of clients that I have that that are Republican that are were worried going up to it, but now are are really excited and really happy, and that's great um, because I I want to empower people to thrive, and so you know whatever makes them you know feel good and and want to do better and be better. That's great. I I embrace that. There's also a number of people that I serve um, that uh, are on the on the opposite side in the other camp who are really struggling uh, right now. And you know, I, I mean, I've maintained uh, an impartial, unbiased representation so that I could be be present and be available to you know a broad amount of uh, of people. So I leave my you know views. Uh, out of it. And mm -hmm. my focus has been on others. So I mean, it's not like I really researched what uh, is going on. I mean, I know that's important to kind of understand what's happening. And I know who do you trust, what news station, what website, you know, I, I you know, and I, I'm not sure that there's not an agenda for each one of those. So um, the, the limited time that I have uh, has been spent on helping other people and then trying to um, dial back and, and make sure that I help myself and do good things and nice things for myself. But um, having said all that, after mm -hmm. this uh, uh, election uh, has come to a, a close, at least for now, I guess, I guess um, there's people that are really struggling uh, out there. A number of my clients are, are struggling. People that I love and care about are really having a tough time uh, for it, friends, family members, neighbors, and the likes. And so I think it's uh, um, something that we need to talk about. So, um, yeah. you know, there's a number of uh, communities that have really worked hard um, uh, for rights, for to, to let their voices be heard, um, in particular, the LGBTQ plus community. And so that's a community that is, is struggling and suffering right now because we're not sure uh, what's going to happen moving forward. Um, and that's painful uh, to watch. And of course, it's out of my control. There's, you know, what, what do I do about it? I guess, you know, speaking about it can be helpful. Educating others can be uh, helpful. And so let's let's talk about uh, some of those things. You're right. Well, Tom, as you know, and, you know, till everybody know that the, the focus of my practice right now is really a lot of crisis work. So um, I don't talk to people, you know, during the medium times, during the, the good times. I talk to people when they're really struggling. Um, so I have had a lot of uh, people this week that are significantly struggling. And what I tell them, is, you know, I'm hearing things like, I, I am so angry. I am so sad. I feel mm -hmm. like I've been punched in the stomach. I, I have these visceral feelings that I don't understand. I don't yeah. know what's going on. Um, I've had very, people that are suicidal. Yes. Um, I talked to a young black woman um, that said the half of the country just told me that a liar, rapist, convict, sexual assault, convicted fraudster is more important than electing a person that looks like me, I don't feel safe. Yeah. I mean, whatever, whether you yeah. believe what her statement or not, whatever your judgments are about our president elect's history, it, that doesn't matter. This is her reality. Yeah. And I was speechless at her reality. Yeah. And that is the depth. And she was like, there's no point in me continuing to live, to live in this country or live at all. Yeah. Um, so it was significant. And so uh, I'll tell you what <clears throat> we I talked about, uh, her and I talked about, and I've talked about with dozens of people since, is trauma, right? So trauma comes in all forms or fashions. Um, yeah. It can be linked to other things or it can be a fresh trauma. For a lot of people, this was a very traumatic event. 
-hmm. whether you whether it was traumatic for you or not it doesn't matter trauma is different for everybody it was a very traumatic Mm -hmm. event and when trauma happens our nervous system gets lit up right so we'd get into this emotional dysregulation where um we just don't have control of our emotions right we don't all these we get flooded with emotions uh we're having stress reactions to trauma um and we don't understand what's happening well what your nervous system is lit up and what we say is when your nervous system is lit up you know five six out of ten whatever um, you're in emotional dysregulation when you're in emotional dysregulation at that level or higher you perceive everything as a threat right Mm -hmm. so these people that um half of the country told them whatever message they told them they don't feel safe they don't feel safe as a a black person in this country they don't feel safe as an lbgtq they don't feel safe as a woman um, that does not it's going to lose their body autonomy and make their decisions for themselves for whatever reason everything that you see is a threat right Mm -hmm. so what happens when we're threatened we go into fight flight freeze or fawn mostly fight or flight so every, a lot of people are in this, they are ready to um, fight and they're, and because uh, their nervous system is so lit up. So yeah. we talk a lot about perceived versus actual threat, right? There's a lot of perceived threat, right? Your rights can maybe in the future could be compromised. That's a possibility. It's a possibility under any administration or any political thing. Those mm-hmm. are perceived threats. Your actual threats right now is your life in danger? No, right? So um, calm it down, you know? Um, right. So we have to turn that page in thinking about actual versus perceived threats. You know, this administration is not gonna change until the end of January. So we at least have time to just relax. And right now, how you calm your nervous system down is just taking good care of yourself, right? Go back to the basics, right? We talk about locus of control. Once I can control yeah. myself, then I can, you know, then I work on my immediate family, then I work on my extended family, then I work on my community, then I work on my country. Well, your country, we can't do that right now, right? You're right back to square one. You've got to take care of yourself. You can't take care of anybody else unless you are emotionally regulated and you're doing things for yourself. How do we do that? We talk about the five dang things every week, right? Sleep, good nutrition, water intake, having a schedule and getting some exercise, yeah focus on those things and right now it's just time to lick your wounds just relax reset there will be time you don't have to decide what to do right now um there are people that were you you go to the google statistics and wednesday morning one of the biggest google things was uh uh, work visas in other countries (laughs) i'm yeah (laughs) and that's people's immediate reaction i have to fix this this is i'm an immediate threat i'm an immediate threat to my existence i've got to fix it well, you're not under an immediate threat. You, you may not be right now. I mean, right. maybe that will be the case, but maybe right now. Right. So that's that whole perceived versus actual threat. Yeah. So right now you're uh, there is no real actual threat, right? Mm-hmm. So reframe that in your head that this is all perceived, this is all potential in the future and treat it as such. And right now you have to go back to the basics. Locus of control, right back to yourself and your immediate family. Mm-hmm. We've been so polarized over the past, uh, I couldn't even tell you, um, 10 years, it seems like. I know it's gotten worse every year, but uh, it's been a while now where we've seen this trend of, of people um, having to decide, you know, which uh, particular camp they're in, you know, whether that's political or, um, you know, taking a stand on something. And, you know, we have a free speech country where you, you, you know, have the right to uh, express your uh, beliefs. But of course, then it's uh, the arguments uh, regarding, you know, what somebody else's beliefs and, and what they want and um, maybe seeing so many differences and um, and not seeing similarities uh, between us. And, and I still want us to find ways to unite with each other, to help each other out um, and to not be at each other's throats. So whatever we need to do to facilitate that, um, the, the 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 better because I think that's what's going to make our country better is, is us joining together and not leading to some civil war or unrest um, mm-hmm. because of politics or because of decisions or because of policies mm-hmm. and things and how whenever somebody is deeply affected then we can rush to uh, to aid and make some positive changes. 
right. for right now, let's focus on being kind to one another, being kind to ourselves and doing healthy things for ourselves. I think that's the most important thing because of that trauma reaction or response, that fight or flight. Take some time to breathe, to meditate, to journal, to do yoga, to exercise, to drink water, to eat healthy, to do, you know, because when we uh, feel overwhelmed and we uh, are traumatized, we divert to those uh, things that make us feel good. And those things that make us feel good can be not so healthy, you know, um, could be. Oh, social. alcohol, drugs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anything um, to get me out of my head right now. Yeah. So uh, it's important uh, to, to not go to those vices um, or at least, you know, not in excess in, in moderation, but, um, but to be kind and loving to yourself first and foremost, and then be kind and loving to the people that are around you, even if you don't feel like they deserve it. And, you know, now is not the time when your nervous system is, uh, is either lit up or freshly coming down. You know, this is not the time to make decisions. And yeah. I'll be the first one to be honest. And I was very guilty of such. I was, um, you know, I don't, always talk a lot about myself and I don't always do a lot of stuff on this podcast uh, about personal stuff, but I think it's important to share. I was one of those people that had such a visceral reaction Wednesday morning. Yeah. Um, and you know what? I Politics aside, it's not about politics. I love politics. I will debate political stances. You want to talk about the economy. You want to talk about border security. You want to talk about any of those things. I have I have no problem discussing those. And I don't care what your views are on those, right? I might have a different opinion and that's okay. We, yeah. can, we can disagree on political stances. Um, but to me, um, at least for a time, while I was in fight or flight mode, this was not a political stance. This was a moral stance, right? Mm -hmm. um, what, I, what happened to me is I grew up learning to be kind, to be good to your neighbor, to be honest, to have ethical business dealings, to respect other people, other people's property, uh, to follow the law. And these are the things that I taught my kids. And to me, it felt like half of the country just told me that that doesn't matter. Yeah. That's not important. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I taught, these are the things that I taught my kids and now I'm like, am I a sucker? And did I teach my kids the wrong things? Because these are not the values that my country upholds. Well, my kids are adults and they'll make their own decisions. So I did the best of good kids. You're on your own. You know, I'm always here for support, obviously, but you know, right. you make your own decisions. But that's what it said to me is my values. What I know to be a good and decent human being and a good American is not how the country feels. Whether yeah. you believe that or not, whether that resonates with you or not, whether you think that's a bunch of horseshit, I, it doesn't matter to me. That's how I feel. Yeah. Um, so it's not about politics. It's about morality. Mm -hmm. And when a 25-year-old Black woman in this country would rather kill herself because the half of the country told her that uh, as a Black woman in America that all those other value, uh, the criminal, the sexual assault, the rape, whatever, that's more important than electing somebody that looks like her. When, um, I mean, it's just, it, it's hard for, for me to fa fathom. When I have to look at a rape victim or somebody that's been sexually assaulted and acknowledge that their perpetrator can be elected, the president of the United States, it, like a, punch in the gut yeah how can i move forward and help people heal when the leader of the free world and the leader of our country is a convicted perpetrator mm -hmm. now you can say all you want that oh it's the weaponization of the justice department you can say all those things and that may be true but he was convicted by a jury of his peers mm -hmm. he's held to the same standard as everybody else in this country so if he didn't do it then is any why is anybody else in prison if, if the if the judicial system doesn't work and the jury of your peers system is weaponized, then just open the prisons and let everybody out. Yeah. And I know I'm like 
I know, Tom, I'm supposed to, you know, put, be pushing this in a positive direction, but <laughs> I need to verbalize how I feel. That's what you need to do. It's representative of how a lot of people feel right now. Yeah. And we will move on and we will heal and we'll get better and we'll support each other. Uh, just kind of where it's at. Yes. And now I have this visceral reaction too, um, as I do with anybody that I serve who has had significant trauma as a result of somebody else. And of course, my 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 personal desire as a man, um, as somebody who wants to be a healing entity in the lives of other people, I want some justice to happen to those people who have perpetrated that, who have traumatized young children or um, or women or anybody. Anytime somebody else has traumatized, you know, with it with a self serving um, motive. Uh, I, I have this, like this, this, this hatred, uh, for, and I want to do something about it. And I'm not always in the position, of course, you know, <laughs> to do something about it. I'm in the position of advocating for the person that I'm sitting across from and to help them heal, uh, from that experience. Um, but I'm still, a you know, red blooded male who, <laughs> you know, like I don't want seeing, uh, people who are vulnerable, people who have been harmed or or in, and hurt and traumatized, to see them suffering continually, um, even years later uh, after an event, um, I want to be able to do something about it. And uh, the best I can do is just help them uh, through it, and then continuing to help uh, other people who have been traumatized, help them through that, and try to help them regulate uh, their their system so they can be happy so they can be productive so they can enjoy their lives and their families and uh, sometimes that's hard um whenever we do experience a significant trauma uh our fucking lives seem flipped upside down and you go from zero to 60 right away you go from and i've experienced this too when something horrendous happens or at least you know that's the perception um, that my whole world is coming to an end. My whole life is over as I know it. And I don't want things to change. And now uh, I can see where people get to that suicidal place, where people get to that place where, what, what the fuck? Why don't I, why don't I even work out? Why am I even doing this? Why am I even caring about myself or about other people? Uh, when our lives are flipped upside down, that that's the normal stress trauma response uh that we go to and it's important to take a step back and work on that that this is not the end of the world this is not the end of the life as you know it that that change may be inevitable and but you are adaptable and you can roll uh with this and if there is something that you feel passionate about and you want to do something about advocate for fight back against, then do that and align yourself with other people who uh, share in that, in that, uh, that fight or that struggle. Um, and let's utilize the best strengths and qualities that we have um, for good. Yeah. And, you know, it seems for a lot of people that um, on Tuesday evening, Wednesday morning, whatever, half the country disregarded your freedoms, your, opinions your safety your whatever it is whatever fill in the blank yeah. however you feel if you feel that half the country did you wrong right and that you may not feel that way if you do don't do it to yourself right don't yeah. get into self-destructive things because you're doing to yourself exactly what you what you feel half of the country yeah. did to you so don't drink to excess don't go out and use a bunch of drugs don't get suicidal don't and I know it's easy to say hard to do, but you treat yourself better than you feel like half the country treated you, right? right. You deserve that. You absolutely deserve that. That's number one. And for the, for the half the people that are really emotionally dysregulated right now, it's normal. That's what's, that's unfortunately how your reality is. And it just yeah. is what it is. You, you can't change it. It is what it is. Be kind to yourself. How are you going to emotionally regulate yourself? Be kind to yourself. That's the only thing you can do. Turn that locus control back on you. Don't worry about the world right now. Don't worry about your political system. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Focus right. on you. Sleep, nutrition, get some exercise, follow a schedule, stay hydrated. Um, support yeah. the people that support you, right? That's how you can. You don't need to make any decisions now. 
right? There will be time enough for that in the future. Right now, the focus should be on you. If you've been harmed directly or indirectly by somebody else or some other group, um, and you continue to allow yourself to suffer the trauma from that, then you're still fucking letting them win. So let's not let them win. Let's let's put our best face forward. Let's, you know, let's tighten up and let's be strong together. Yeah, and I'll tell you what now what I'm doing, you know, I'm taking good care of myself. But the other thing that I'm doing is I'm crafting um, and I'm reworking it and I'm, I, it's going to be like Shakespeare. This thing's going to be beautiful. But I'm crafting an email that I'm going to set out to the people in my life that I know um, are supporting or, you know, the, the elected administration on the first of every month. And I'm going to ask them, how is that going with the war versus Russia and Ukraine? Because that was supposed <laughs> to end in 24 hours. How's that going? Hey, how's yeah. the gas prices going? How are the grocery prices going? How's the uh, you know price of a barrel of oil going? Hey, mm -hmm. how about the you know? Do you feel safer? Um, how are all? Uh, how many immigrants have been deported? Um, what what are all these other promises that they made? You know, and I'm just going to ask them on the first of every month. So if you're in my life, expect that text from me every single month. Of month <laughs> I'll be asking. How are things going? Yeah. Because you know what? And that's fine. You you think y'all can do it better? And that's great. Maybe you can. I hope you can. I really do. But you made a lot of promises. So now you got to keep them. Because yeah. the first time around, the promises weren't kept. We still don't have a wall and Mexico didn't pay for it. I mean, there were a lot of things that were promised. <laughs> yeah. the first time around, that never transpired. <laughs> So yeah. this time I'm going to ask you every month and then until you block me. And if you block me, that's fine. I don't know. Okay. See you. <laughs> fine with that. So, so those are the things that I'm doing for me. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, the client, which, uh, um, who, who is struggling and, uh, I'm doing my best to be there, uh, for this person and brought up an interesting, uh, um, uh, topic that of Pandora's box and one of the last evils that was released was hope. And uh, uh, you know, I don't remember much about the story, but uh, just kind of talking about uh, hope and, and how, if that, uh, if the hope is not uh, met, then it creates such uh, despair. And uh, I, I think that that's um, something that we have to battle against is, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we have this hope that maybe things will be better that maybe changes will come. Um, and I think we're going to be disappointed. So I think more importantly, instead of putting our en energy into uh, hoping and praying uh, for the best to, uh, uh, to happen, um, is to focus on today. And what do I need to do today to make sure that I'm doing the best for myself, that I'm doing the best for my family and the people I love and those around me, that I'm being the best version of myself, the best that I can be, the strongest version of myself and doing things that are going to make me stronger and more resilient for tomorrow and then the day after and then the day after. Um, and it's okay that if you have a little bit of, uh, of hope, because I do have some hope that things will change, but to keep that in check. And somebody else had mentioned managing your expectations and uh I think that that's another interesting uh, topic for a conversation, managing our expectations. We do have these expectations, whether consciously or unconsciously, and uh, to, to keep those uh, in check that if we have these uh, high expectations, either for ourselves or for other people or for the country, and they're not met, then uh, we're going to be traumatized uh, again, and it's going to lead to disappointment and maybe despair. So just focusing on today, this moment, what can I do for myself and for those around me that's going to be good, that's going to propel us uh, into you know, uh, goodness, happiness, kindness in the future? Um, anyway, yeah. For sure, Tom. So it's a moment in time. We, you know, I saw a TikTok and this woman, it was an older woman, and she said uh, her 89 year old mother or something like that, um, in the midst of this woman feeling very upset, said, listen, I lived through World War II. I lived through the bombing of Hiroshima. I lived through, you know, Nixon. I lived through the assassination um, uh, or attempt of Reagan. I 
I lived through, you know, all of these things, 9-11. I lived through the Korean War. I lived through this. And there are dark times in our history. And if you feel this is a dark time, then you validate it in your feelings. If you feel it's the golden age, as truth is telling us, then that's great. I hope it is. But, you know, there are dark times that have happened. And there yeah. are, and what does it Confucius say? May you live in interesting times. And I think these are interesting <laughs> yeah. times for sure. So um, just listen, it's, it's a moment in time. And right. it doesn't have to define you. It's just uh, uh, to uh, to a rally cry of the old civil rights movement. We shall persevere. We shall persevere. We shall overcome. Yeah. Now, uh, we always talk in some fashion about adversity and challenges and overcoming adversity and how the adversity makes us stronger. And so... This is the silver lining that, you know, even in dark times, you know, some of the worst times imaginable, these are the things that facilitate uh, change, growth. Um, and, and so if you're experiencing dark times now and oh, for the next couple of years, um, then know that we are going to come through this yeah. um, stronger. So absolutely. Yeah, for sure. You know, in in uh, you know, as I'm a you know recovered alcoholic that I, I've shared, uh, you know, I don't mind disclosing that. And uh, part of the uh, AA community is sort of like, you know, when you have people that are discussing, um, I feel like I'm in control of it now. I feel like I can go back out and drink or drug or do those things because of what I know and what I've learned. Um, the the AA community is like, well, you know, fucking go back out there and see what it's like see what happens. So, you know, if people in this country want to see this side, you know, take power and be in control because they're going to facilitate all these changes, then all right, maybe you need to see, you know, what doesn't happen to mm -hmm. under, to really understand uh, uh, what it's like or what the opposite side uh, was trying to say. That. Sure. Man, hey, I'm holding optimism. If yeah. he could do half of what he said he's going to do, yeah. get it up. I, I want to see this country progress for sure. And I hope it's true. I really do. Yeah. So I have, I'm going to try to remain optimistic and we'll, we'll see what happens. There is no immediate threat. So I don't have to, I don't have to be lit up like a Christmas tree. I'm all good. I'm all good in the hood. And that goes back to uh, what your mom said, you know, why suffer more than once? Yes, I love that quote. If you worry about the worst case scenario, and in the unlikely event that it actually happens, you've lived it twice. Why do you want to live something like that twice? Why do you live it twice? I love that quote. Yeah, she was, you know, she was all four foot nine, but she was smart as hell. <laughs> right, and it's very stoic uh, yeah. in nature. Don't uh, live it twice. Yeah, you're all ca catastrophizing right now. You're thinking the worst. You are imagining all of these things that could could potentially happen, and maybe they could, but probably they won't. Yeah. Uh, but but even if they do, why would you want to live that twice? If it's going to happen in the future, you're going to live it anyway. So why live it twice? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up, Tom. It's a good reminder. Absolutely, and we'll see. We'll, uh, you know, join uh, together, you and I, and with anybody who wants to be a, a part of it, part of our community, then then please do. Please reach out. Uh, send in your questions or comments to questions at therapyunzipped.com. Let's keep the conversation uh, going. Uh, how are you uh, doing? Uh, how are you struggling? And, and how can we help you uh, persevere? How can we help you overcome? Uh, because in doing that, uh, it helps us. It, it helps us as as people um, and as therapists uh, make positive changes in our lives and grow in a positive direction by being there for others. You know, that's what we've decided to do uh, for our lives. That's our archetype, you know, as uh, caregivers, healers, you know, um, giving back, being of service. And so we'll continue uh, to do that, uh, e even in, in spite of dark times, potential evils, you know, negative changes, um, and and maybe that things won't be so bad. Right. But let's focus on today. Absolutely. And we got a lot of people listening from all over the world, many different countries. So I really would be interested in to hear your perspective. Um, 
I would really, I mean, please give us your perspective. If you would grace us with the, uh, your time on an email, I would really like to hear your perspective. Questions yeah. at therapyonzip.com. We would love that. Anything else come up for you? Other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how is the theater? <laughs> <laughs> I know your husband took a bullet to the head, but other than that, how was the production? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the music? <laughs> they put on a good play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How are the seats? Uh, yeah. The popcorn was stale, but you know, four out of let's, ten. Let's focus on just getting stronger each day. Absolutely. So I'm grateful to hear that you, uh, broke out the kettlebell and started swinging that thing around. Oh, yeah. Man, I had the energy. I almost threw that thing to the moon, man. <laughs> but that that goes to, that goes to you know, like you can redirect not only your thoughts, but also that energy that you're feeling. If you're feeling hurt, if you're feeling traumatized, if you feel overwhelmed, then take it, harness that energy. And mm-hmm. the more that you do it, the easier it becomes to do that mm-hmm. and shift it into something that would be more productive, more helpful for you instead of just sitting and perseverating over it instead mm-hmm. of engaging in overeating or overindulging or drugs and alcohol and you know, saying, getting a case of the fuckets, let's harness that energy and mm-hmm. put it to good use because- like I said, if uh, if we're traumatized and we're hurt, then to continue hurting ourselves because of that, to continue to traumatize ourselves and not redirecting those thoughts and that energy, it enables them to continue to win and to continue yeah. to hurt us. And fuck that. Yeah. Well said, Tom. <laughs> I know. Tom, always a pleasure. Always a treat to be with you. Uh, grateful for your friendship and of course if there's anything uh, that we can do for you out there please reach out to us we're here to help absolutely all right see you next week see you next week